Hey, Razor here, the worst YouTuber alive, and I just got a new medical diagnosis today. Let's check it out. When Miyazaki made Super Blario Brothers, did he think it would end up- here? WALUIGI MOVE, YOU <laughs> Mario Party 7 is the ninth Mario Party, just like how Resident Evil 4 is the 13th and the 30th. Mario Party 7 is the fourth Mario Party game on the GameCube, the others being 4, 5, and 6, and it was released in November of 2005 for North America and Japan, January 2006 for the UK, February for the rest of Europe, and June for some reason in Australia. Mario hates the Australians. No. Mario loves you. Mario Party 4 has Doors of Doom, which instantly invalidates it and makes it the worst game ever made. 5 is kind of weird, but good, I guess. And 6 is also very good. Mario Party 7 is probably the most interesting of the bunch, though. Which is why it has a 64 on Metacritic. Mario Party 7 actually has the lowest Metacritic score in the entire series, minus the handheld games. But personally, I don't know if that score is really justified, because I think a lot of the new ideas Mario Party 7 throws into the mix actually come out pretty well and make for a much more interesting Mario Party experience, at least to me. But it also deserves it because I hate Mario Party, which is why it's a 10 out of 10 series. At the same time, though, I do think more could be different because it felt like they spent so much time experimenting and making certain things different that other core parts of the game feel underdeveloped. So I guess in the end, that score is justified because overall I'm leaving Mario Party 7 very mixed. And by mixed, I mean that I mostly hate this game, but some aspects are kind of cool. So, let's get into this fucking train wreck of a Mario Party game, because what else am I going to do? Procrastinate? Yes. It's like Mario Party, but the boards are different. A lot of Mario Party 7 is pretty standard, albeit kind of below average Mario Party, but where it gets interesting is the boards. I guess I should mention that for this video, I'm mainly focusing on just the main party mode. There's other stuff, but I don't really care about that stuff right now. I just care about the main Mario Party stuff. There are six boards in Mario Party 7, and I've played five of them, and I never got the six because I think you have to unlock it, and I did not care to do that because I hate this game, which means it's the best Mario Party. Each board is based off of a different country. The Bowser board is based off of Arizona. The boards are the Grand Canal, based on Italy, Pagoda Peak, based on China, Pyramid Park, based on Egypt, Neon Heights, based on the US, Windmillville, which is Dutch themed, and Bowser's Enchanted Inferno, which is based off of the Bowser. Each board plays differently, and you acquire stars in somewhat different ways, although they still obviously involve you buying shit. This is Mario Party 7's big thing, because what else would it be? The awful Mike minigames? My big thing is eating this piece of paper. I wonder why that psychologist called me clinically insane. Other Mario Party games have had some different boards similar to 7, but I don't know if any other Mario Party game has had every single board being so different. So Mario Party 7 gets a point there. You're moving up in the world, Mario Party 7. Anyway, let's go through each board. The Grand Canal is the first one, and this involves you getting stars by buying them. Uh, wait. This is just Mario Party! Yeah, so the Grand Canal is just Mario Party. There's nothing super special about this board, it's Mario Party. Which is fine, it's fucking Mario Party. But in the case of this game, it's a little boring. Pagoda, I have no idea if I'm saying that right. Peak is the second board, and this is where it starts to get more interesting. Instead of having one star that's always the same price and it just changes location, there's one star at the top of the board that changes price when someone buys it. It goes from 10 coins to 20 to 30, then 40. But this can be changed on the chance basis, which allow you to roll between the four choices for the next star price. Once it gets to 40, it goes back down. Nintendo is teaching you about the housing market. Next, Toad will teach you about the American Civil War. Hey Mario, this is where Abraham Lincoln gave the Gettysburg address! This board is pretty interesting. I guess fundamentally it's not too different from a normal Mario Party board, other than the fact that the star stays in one location and the price changes. But I found the board to be pretty fun. That being said, I got to the top like once and didn't have enough money to buy the star. Can I have a star? Mario's too poor. Mario? Wario. 
Don't you dare. <laughs> I fucking hate video games. Pyramid Park is the next one, and the gimmick of this one is pretty similar to a board from Mario Party 6, Snowflake Lake. It's basically the same thing as Snowflake Lake, but it's a desert this time. You start with five stars, and then you have to use these chain chomps to steal stars from other players. Or you can do it the superior way and steal it with the pink boo. Idiot. <laughs> oh my god, what's happening to Yoshi? Stop. He's just being killed. Oh my god, we do get it. It costs 10 coins to ride on chain chomps if you want to roll one dice, and it costs 20 for two dice. There's also this red chomp that lets you roll three dice for 10 coins. Now, I wasn't super keen on this one, but I like the idea. I just wasn't keen because me and my friend Mitchell were losing for 90% of the game and only won because of bonus stars. That same attitude for me kind of continues with Neon Heights, which isn't bad, and me and my friend Super won on this one, but it also wasn't super interesting. Basically, there's three chests on the map that cost 10 coins to open. That's right, you have to pay this stupid no, fucker. One of them has a bob bomb that sends you back to the start of the board. One of them has 20 coins, and the other has a star, and when you get the star, the chests are replaced. They appear in random spots, and the order of which thing you get is random. That being said, literally every time the chest got replaced, the first one was the bomb for me for it some is. reason. This one is kind of interesting, but I didn't find it all too entertaining to play. But by far... The biggest crime of this board. Don't I play that entire cutscene again. Okay. No! <laughs> you have to watch this whole thing. I hate Mario Party 7. This game sucks. This game is terrible. This stupid ass cutscene plays every time you land on a chance base, and there's no way to skip it. Fortunately, Windmillville makes it more interesting again, which is good because my last experience with Windmills was flat out three. That What's one, the maybe? eject key? It just says press the eject key to eject. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? The goal of Windmillville is to buy as many windmills as possible, as each windmill gives you a star. Red windmills have one star, green windmills have two, and the yellow windmill has three. You can choose how much you want to spend on a windmill, so you can just put your entire bank account into one of these things if you really don't want anyone else to have it. Oh yeah, I guess I should mention what happens when someone buys your windmill. Yoshi, more like... Oh. Dumb idiot. When someone buys your windmill, they get the stars you got from it, and they buy it by putting more money into it. This is my favorite board in the game. I found it to be the most interesting and more different than the rest. So if you had to play one board in Mario Party 7, first, don't play Mario Party 7, but second, play this one. Oh yeah, here's a random complaint that doesn't really have anything to do with the boards, but I couldn't find another place for it. Well, why does the map suck in this game? I get that you can't really have a Mario Party 6 style map because the giant marker above your character blocks what's in front of you on the map. But why can't you see where you are at all on the map? They could have made like a smaller marker, but no, you just have to figure it out for some reason. So, all that shit's cool, but how are the mini games? Oh. Awful. The big drawing factor of Mario Party is the minigames, so you'd expect them to be good, right? No. No, you wouldn't. These minigames... <laughs> fucking suck. 90% of them are really bland and boring, and then the ones that are somewhat unique just aren't very good. Like this page-turning one. Th th this is awful. Most minigames are just Super Mario Jump. Super Mario Run. Super Mario Collect. Are you having fun yet? Are you? Are you? Also, Yoshi cheats in, like, every f fucking minigame. I don't know what the hell his deal is. That being said, he didn't win a single game against us because he just sucks at everything else. <laughs> the game froze, so I thought you closed it. <laughs> it's too powerful. Also, I haven't even talked about the Bowser and Donkey Kong minigames. Why do these also suck? The Bowser minigames fundamentally aren't awful, I guess, but my biggest problem with them is the fact that if you lose, you can just lose all of your coins. And I know this isn't the only Mario Party game that does this. I just wish you could do this in the last two fucking turns of the game. These DK minigames suck ass, though. Roll around on this barrel and collect the bananas. How fun! Oh yeah, and then there's the stupid ass, stupid fucking, stupid shitty fucking mic minigames. The mic minigames basically revolve around you saying, Play. Stop. Fire. Shoot. Orange. And that's about it. I know you can't do much with the formula of mic minigames, but honestly, why even include these? These are genuinely horrible. The minigames in Mario Party 7 are horrendous. 
This is everything I would have never wanted from a Mario Party game. It's like Nintendo went into a fucking lab, dissected every other Mario Party game, and took every boring and annoying element of every minigame and built the minigames around them. How the hell can you mess up the main thing in Mario Party? How? And also, apparently there's like 80 minigames in this game, but I feel like I've played like 20 because I keep getting the same ones over and over. But I don't care to get the other ones because the ones I've played are so fucking garbage. These just aren't good. There's no other way I can put it. Which is why I'm so mixed on this game. On one hand, I think the boards are pretty cool, and on the other, the minigames just suck. Nintendo must have spent so much time making the boards cool and unique in this game that they forgot to make a good Mario Party game and instead made the play awful minigames until you never want to play a video game ever again simulator. And the boards aren't even the most interesting thing about this game to me anymore. What's more intriguing is that nobody at Nintendo ever went, hey, this is a pretty shit Mario Party game. Now to be fair, this isn't the worst Mario Party game, so at least it has that going for it. It has some cool ideas like the Bowser time thing. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention that. L let's talk about that real quick. After five turns, Bowser comes out and is like, Hey guys, Bowser time! And we'll do something like taking down one of the shops and opening up his own thing, meaning that if you or anyone else passes it, you kinda just get forced to go in there and buy some dumb bullshit for 20 coins and then the shop just kinda dies, I guess. This is an interesting idea, I don't know if this is any other Mario Party game before this one, it might be, again, I don't know. But I like it. Anyway, back to hating on this game. But all of those cool ideas feel wasted on a Mario Party game that has mini games that genuinely feel like they were thrown together in 20 goddamn minutes. Mario Party 7 is essentially what it would be like if an alien who's never played Mario Party tries to make a Mario Party game and has some surprisingly fun ideas, but even more terrible ones. I really wanted to like Mario Party 7, but I hate the minigames so fucking much that even though I like the boards, I just don't really like this game. I'm feeling like a 4.4 out of 9.3. <laughs> so that's Mario Party 7. I know, a pretty strange diagnosis, right? Wait. Why the fuck was Mario Party 7 my medical diagnosis?